So I'll sing it to the world This simple message to my girl No more empty self-possession Vision swept under the mat It's no New Year's resolution It's more than that Hi, welcome back to another One Chart Lesson. Today, by a special request, we're doing a fantastic old split end song called Message to My Girl. You just heard me do it, finger style way. I'll also show you a way that you can kind of strum through this song and it's pretty much the same thing, but um, I want you to know that you can strum it or you can play it with your fingers just like I did there. We're gonna go through it all kinds of ways here. Download your chart, let's get started. You, um, Notice that I'm doing this in a different key to the original. So to do this arrangement, I've, I've put it in these certain chords and it seems to work all right. But to play it in the original key, we will need to put a capo on the fourth fret, which puts our key instead of A into C sharp. Everything we do is the same. On your chart, we start off with this little intro uh, melody, if you like, picked through the A chord. And I'm gonna call these chords by their shapes even though this is gonna sound like a C sharp. So, start off with the bass note or lowest couple of notes from your chord, and then pick down through the chord, then lift your fingers off the G and the B string. Lift the B string note up to three, the third fret. So you're now playing an A sus four and come down back to the second fret B string to turn it back into an A. So it sounds like this. And then back into the rhythm. That little rhythm there seems to work for this song. It's obviously, you know, not exactly the way they play it, but they've got the whole band, so we're just kind of getting through with this sort of rhythm. And I find that sort of works most of the way through this song. And there's a couple of nice little tasty things that the bass does that I tried to incorporate into your chart. When we get up to them, I'll point them out, but you don't need to do them. They're just kind of extra little bits that, I don't know about you, but I, I hear them when I hear the song in my head because they're just iconic little catchy riffs. Anyway, that's the bass. This is the guitar. We've done that riff. The second time through, same thing, but you hold that note for a half beat longer, I think. And then on the very last half beat of that bar, you play the open E string. And if you can let that E ring on, it sounds really nice like this. Change your hand position because we're going to play this A7 sus4, which is a more complicated name for a very simple shape. Same rhythm, but we, we're doing that A7 sus4, then we're coming back down to an A7. to the really tasty piece of music for this song. We go into an F sharp minor. Now I'm gonna show you a simple way to do this, but it's not as colorful as this, and this keeps the bass and everything present in, in your arrangement. So this is the way I recommend doing it. This is the way that's on your chart. I'll show you the easy way straight after this, but what we're doing is the F sharp minor. And basically I'm playing the E string, the A string with my, the E string with my, th with my thumb, the A string with my finger, and then the other two fingers, I'm grabbing the next two notes out of the chord. So it sounds like this. And then back to the A string. So E, A, 
middle two strings back to A. And that's, that's that chord. Then we move to this uh, odd little chord here, which I call it an F augmented over G sharp, right? So it looks like this. It looks like an E shaped chord moved up two frets and moved over one string. So what you're doing is you're playing fourth fret E string with your third finger. With your pinky, you're playing fourth fret A string. With your second finger, you're playing third fret D string. And then this finger for now is on the second fret G string. So you've got this. So you've gone from F sharp minor be detached and precious. Go to an A. And again, we're still just walking through those chords like that. Come back down to the F augmented over G sharp, but this time you can leave that finger there where it was over the A chord. And it's easy just to drop those three fingers in the same shape back down to do that F augmented chord on the way down. Back down to the F sharp minor. The only thing you G feel is vicious. And on the B. Right, so that little run. It's here to be detached and precious. The only thing you feel is vicious. That's tricky. So take your time getting your hands around that. Um, I can still feel some fatigue in my hand because I've been practicing this song a little bit today. It's, a, it's because of those shapes, it's a little bit tricky. Stick with it. They sound really nice. Depending on the guitar you're playing, those chords can sound unclear, a little bit less defined. If you've got a nice guitar, that's probably going to sound really nice and chimey. If it sounds awful and you're playing them right and they're all clear and everything sounds good, it may actually be your strings or your guitar because those the harmonies in these chords are, are quite close then it, they can easily kind of get muddied if they're not perfectly intoned or, or in tune the easy way of doing that little run when you start on the f sharp minor is just to take the top four strings out of that f sharp minor and do this down to the third fret down to the second fret Back up to the 3rd fret, up to the 4th fret again, up to the 5th fret with your pinky, and then finish on the G. Now, that's fine to do. It doesn't spell out the same chords exactly the same way, but it's pretty darn close. It's easier to play. It's clearer because they're, they're higher notes and the, the chords are a little bit simpler. But what I find is that when you when you go from uh, that that kind of the, the bass drops out of it and it loses a little bit bit of its its energy. So I prefer to do these chords. But you take your pick. Now, um, once you get past that, we're doing another verse. I don't want to say I want you. Now, here's where the bass starts doing some nice little tasty bits. Now, if you want to put these things in, what I hear is this. I don't want to say I... And the bass goes... So you do that little run at the end of that bar, open E, hammer on to two, hammer on to three, and then land on the A, on the A chord, right? So, I don't want to say I love you. The timing is hard to do and, and sing, so I'll do it without singing, but it's. And then at that spot there, the bass goes. So we can incorporate that into our chord because we're playing an A. tapped it out what you're doing so you take your second fret a string you play your open G and B strings 
and you hammer that bass note while you're playing the open strings from two up to four. Come down to the open A string, keep those open strings ringing, you can play them again at that point if you want, and then land on the G. At that point you can include the open D string as well. So it sounds like this. Simple little thing, kind of fiddly, but if you want to, you can include that. It only starts in the second verse, so that's where you kind of, you know, you want to start putting it in, if you do. Now, um, after that verse, we go through the same thing again. It's wrapped up in conversations. That's the trick there, is to, when you do that F sharp minor, F augmented, A, keep that finger on there and then bring that chord back down on top of it. It's whispered in the hush. Though I'm frightened by the words, I think it's time I made it hurt. Now here's, here comes the chorus, beautiful chorus, nice and simple as they often should be and, and are killer choruses these guys, they're just brilliant songwriters. Now we're going to an A sus 2. So we're leaving the A7s and the A7 sus 4s and the A's behind and we're doing an A sus 2. No more empty self possession. Same with the D. D sus 2 instead just gives that really nice big open ringing clarity to the chord. Vision swept under the map. E minor. Then we go to a C. It's no New Year's resolution. And we go to a D here, you can play an open D here, sounds fine. I like to do a C, maybe even with a C over a G chord like that, and then just slide it up two frets to get that D over an A it would be. It's no New Year's resolution, it's more than that. Once we do that, that second chorus, then we're into um, another verse. And it's the same thing over and over again. Now I wake up happy, warm in a lover's embrace. No one else can touch us while we're in this place. So I'll sing it to the world, a simple message to my girl. More empty self possession. Back into the chorus. A sus2, E minor, C, D. It's more than that. Now we're doing a riff. a piano break which is really hard to cover except to do those chords and they sound nice enough I think it's no I'm frightened by the word I think it's time I make it heard double bridge here so I'll sing it to the world simple message to my girl no more empty self-possession swept under the man Double that chorus, though there's nothing quite as real as a touch of your sweet hand. I won't spend the rest of my life buried in the sand. If you want. At, at the end there, it goes through uh, eight bars, I think, of the A7, sus4 so to A7. Then the Tag comes in, the riff again. But it just fades out from that point on. So that's the entire song. 
there's a little bit there. You need to work your way through it. If you're playing with fingers, try and keep it nice and relaxed and pulled back. I actually started playing this song like too fast and too, not, not too fast, but too energetically by, by sort of cranking it a little bit, you know that. And it just sounded a little bit too forced. This is a nice, uh, almost drifting kind of song, but it's just, it's better to pull it back, even by 2% to what you think you might be wanting to play it. Just pull it back a little bit, open it up a bit. And that goes for a lot of songs. If you pull it back by 2%, it's hardly slowing it down at all. But just that little bit of, of kind of restraint and slowing down allows you to articulate bits and pieces. If you're singing, it gives you just that little bit of extra space to concentrate on your singing and sing that little bit more emotionally. All of that stuff. Pull it back by 2%. Now, if you are strumming, if you are strumming this, you can actually play it with a little bit more, little bit more force, but... I'm going to strum it with my fingers, because that's more natural to me, but it's the same thing, pick or fingers, really, if you're used to using a pick. But the difference will be, you can, you can pick out this... Uh, Another way you could do that, which I haven't tabbed out, but you could do this, you could, you could find those notes kind of over the droning A string. itself a bit more when you're using a pick or a strumming technique at least because you know when you're doing your verses you can go and I know I'm using my thumb there on the bass note but you can be like the A on an upstrum. That's kind of the pick version. Everything else is, you know, pretty much what you're what you're doing with the finger style version. And the strums can be a little bit more traditional and a little bit more kind of, you know, pick oriented, but that's the way to do it with uh, a pick and strumming. Personally, I prefer the finger style way of playing that because it just, it opens that, like I said, it opens that song up by just pulling it back a little bit and, and letting things breathe. And I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope I haven't waffled on uh, too much there with this fantastic song by split ends just one of their one of their best and they had a lot um more to come from split ends from crowded house and from the Finns, uh because they're all such fantastic songwriters and they're beautiful songs to play on guitar but that was message to my girl from 1983 conflicting emotions album have a listen to it if you've never sat down and listened to the whole album before give it a go thank you for watching we will see you here again soon